What's up, Low Rider family? Welcome back to another episode with Lolo Zamora. Now today, as you guys can see by looking, we are not going to do any, something Low Rider related today. Um, I, bu- I recently bought a new tool, and it requires a 220, 240 volt outlet, um, but it, also with a different plug. So... For those that want to rewire, you know, not really rewire, but install a 220 outlet, it's pretty easy, really simple. Um, if you're renting uh, your place, make sure you ask permission for, from your landlord or pay them to install it. But in reality, this is super, super easy. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to actually put my uh, outlet in this wall, in this part of the section. Um, since I need to install the little junction box, the game box, where the outlet's going to go into, I'm actually going to tear that piece out and literally tear it out because it's nailed in. If it was screwed in, then I can just unscrew and then reuse that piece, but I can't. I'm going to have to buy probably one big whole sheet just to replace that little part. So... Um, and since I'm not running it far from the circuit box, circuit breaker, um, I'm not having to buy a, you know, crap long, you know, you get what I'm saying. I don't have to buy long cables. So, in, in, in reality, this is all you need right here. This is all you need. All you need is your wire, a gauge wire, um, for heavy for high voltage stuff a breaker that game box that I was talking to you about it gets nailed into the 2x4 of your wall the outlet that goes in here and then a faceplate that's all you need just those what one two three four five things you just need five things to do a 220 um outlet in your garage and everything only cost me $27.22. That's because I didn't, you know, I only bought three feet of wire. I probably don't even need three feet. But I'm going to take off this panel real quick completely and show you what I'm working with. And that is super easy. So let me take that off and we'll be right back. Just, it'll, it, it's like six screws, depending how many yours has by already i already took off the other four so let me just take off those two and we'll be right back okay now that i took off the the panel now you're exposed to everything don't touch anything right now because everything is hot everything is live this big breaker right here is the main breaker so these are the two power wires that come from outside of the house into the house so turn this off and then you can safely work on everything else okay now depending on how old your house is um, for the ground see this bar right here is ground that bar is ground um, as you guys can see there's a bar linking linking both of them together now in some older houses there is a ground only bar and then there's a common ground bar what's the difference I have no clue why they're different, but one's a common, one's a ground, which is weird. But on this house, it's slightly newer, and uh, it's just one whole ground, so it doesn't matter um, which one's ground in this case. But in most cases, make sure that on your house, make sure you know which one, which bar is ground, which bar is common ground. So a little bit, in, little info about wiring. Um, as you can see, you got your ground wire coming from the outside of the house, and then you got these two power wires. These two power wires from the outside of the house that come from the uh, ele electricity poles outside, each wire is 110, 120 volt. Yeah, 120 volt. Each wire is 120 volt. And the way this works to get your um, 240 uh, outlet working 
um, as you guys can see, since there's two, there's two connections behind on the other side of these breakers, as you can see, one bar there and one bar here. These are two separate bars. Now, when you put a big breaker, like see, this is a double breaker right here. This is a this is a 220, 240 uh, breaker right here. This is for, I believe this, yeah, this one's for the AC. Now, um, this big breaker actually hooks up to this bar right here, and it hooks up to this one. So you're adding both voltages together, like in a low rider battery, you know, when you link them all together in series, it, you're going up in voltage. Same here, you put them together, you link them up in series. Uh, once you install, it installs into do those two points right there and then you get your 240 volt yeah so that's pretty simple so that's why there's two wires each wires 120 when you put a big breaker in and you get your 240 um, for my setup I'm using 8 gauge wire this is not the wire but I'm using 8 gauge wire I'm using a 50 amp circuit breaker and then I'm using the big three prong uh, outlet because that's what my new tool requires. So I'm here now. Um, I want to do the easy part first. So what I'm going to do, rip this section out real quick. Just rip it out. And then I'm going to punch my hole of where I'm going to run my wires through. Um, I might run it through one of these little circles. So these, these right here, all of these are called punch outs. That, those three right there, look, all those on the side, um, you know, up there and stuff like that. Those are all punch outs. All you gotta do is punch it out and easily you have a hole to run your wire. So, so yeah, well, let me take that out and we'll be right back. So, excuse my stomach. So, what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna locate where I wanna put this at. Um, like I was saying, this has to go up against a stud because of the nails, and it comes like that already from Home Depot. So, before I actually locate the place where I wanna put it, well, I kinda actually know where I want to put it. I wanna put it in this area right here against that 4x4 right there and uh, um, but before I do that before I actually nail it to the side of the wall um, as you guys can see the back of, of the game box is what it was called it has these punch outs as well so go ahead punch out the corner that you're, you want to run your wire through and then put it in and just pretty much find a spot now, um, let's see if you can see it. So here, we got these two little tabs on the side. So these, the way you want to put it is, uh, uh, say my hand is the, is the two by four. The wood, the, those tabs need to lay on top of the wood like that. So if, you, if they're further in, then when you put the face plate, it might not catch. So hopefully that makes sense. So, I'm going to punch this out real quick and nail my box to the wood and we'll be right back. So, so uh, now I put the game box in. I went ahead and ran the wire to the back of the box because I knew once it's nailed in, um, it was going to be a bit of a pain to run it. So, I ran the wires through. If, you're, if your wires fit in one punch out, you can. Uh, in my case, I went ahead and just did it this way because it didn't really fit that well in the, in the whole three in one hole. So, so yeah, so I did it that way. In this case, the green wire is your ground wire for house electricity stuff. So, next up is what I did. I kind of, I stuck my screwdriver on the other side of this uh, drywall to the back here poked around until one of these tabs lifted up so 
One's lifted up right now. Let's go ahead and finish knocking it out. Oops, don't want to put that in there because of the, the box is still hot. Okay, now I got one of the punch outs out. That's that's easy, right? So, I told you guys it was easy. Um, and then now what you want to do, grab your wire and run it through that hole. So, let me put you guys over here real quick because I kind of need two hands. So that's it, just running through the hole on the punch out. So that's pretty much it. So now I've got my, my ground wire and my two hot wires right here. So um ran it through. So next step is um I can actually, what I'm going to do is strip some of this uh, insulation off and I'm going to go ahead and screw it on, screw these two wires to the breaker. Uh, it does not matter um, what wire goes to what side on the breaker. For example, as you guys can see it on this breaker, it's one breaker together. Um, as you can tell, the black is on the left, red is on the right. Now look on this breaker over here, this double breaker. It's on the right, the red is on the right, black, wait, yeah. Red is on the left, black is on the right. So it doesn't matter because it's a 240 uh, outlet. Hopefully, hopefully that, that makes sense. It does not matter which wire goes to which wire. And when you wire your outlet um, on the prongs, it does not matter. On two of the prongs, it doesn't matter which wire goes on which. Green wire always goes on the ground. Ground part of it. That one does matter, but the other two don't matter. Let's see. Let's see where it says. Let's see. The ground, the ground. Green right here. This is your ground right here. So this is this, is this guy right here. This is the ground. These two. These other two over here are these two, and those two don't matter which wire gets the red, which one gets the black, it doesn't matter. Because the, your tool that you're using is still going to get the 240 that it needs to work. So, um, I'm, let me strip the ends on those real quick, and I'll show you guys how to wire this in. Then we'll go to, we'll pretty much go ahead finish off this bottom part. And before I cut the wire, cut the wire, cut the power to the all the entire house so that we can put the breaker in. So we'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead, I stripped the wires on both ends. So now um, I'm going to connect my outlet to it. So, show you guys. So, like I was saying, uh, where it says green invert. That's where your ground is going, the green wire. Um, what was I going to say? 
sometimes these screws are coated or, or, or painted green so you can easily tell but there's always some kind of indication uh, showing you guys what which ones are you know the ground so I don't know if you guys can see but on this little plate it has a line and it tells you how much to actually strip off the wire yeah so that's a little help so what you're going to do now is stick the wire into the ground tighten it down okay make sure it's on there nice and tight Okay, now do the other two, and remember, it does not matter which is black and which is red. It doesn't matter because it's still, you're still going to get the full, you know, the full 240 volts. And believe it or not, it did only cost me 27 bucks for all this, but since I'm going to buy some drywall, um, it's going to cost me just a little bit more. Maybe 30 40 bucks total. So, so, you guys don't have to follow my way. You guys can do your own research if you want. But, you know, doing 240 outlets are super easy. And, um, so yeah. make sure that they're tight because the last thing you want is these coming loose while they're in that game box and touching each other and then causing the fire that's the last thing you want so make sure that they're on there nice and tight so now they're on there nice and tight um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and screw that into there um, the the plug outlet, the, the outlet itself does come with screws, so you can screw it into the game box. So go ahead and do that. So let me, let me get the correct screwdriver. Okay, got it. As you guys can tell, it only in in the in the box, it, there's only two screws, one up top, one on the bottom. So, but the kit comes with like four screws. And you guys are probably asking, well, what do you need? What tool did you get that you need? Two twenty. Well, welders, compressors and plasma cutters you need 220 my compressors don't need 220 and my welder it kind of does need 220 but I'm uh, you know I'm always resetting the breaker so whatever Let me uh, just get rid of my slack and we'll be right back. Okay, um, I kind of forgot to press the record button, but I guess I was talking to myself. I went ahead, screwed it to that game box with those two screws. So I'm going to go ahead and put the faceplate on now. I, I kind of don't have to because I don't have the drywall yet. But I will anyways. And the faceplate that you buy does come with screws. And the screws go into the faceplate of that uh of what the outlet came with. It has holes already made into it. So yeah. And this shouldn't take you very long. Even if you had, you know, good drywall, this whole thing would probably, you know, 
you probably spend about an hour doing this completely if you guys had the drywall. So just go ahead and put it over the just like that. And of course you need a flathead on the Phillips. And they do sell different color face plates. So if you're if you don't have a drywall in your garage, you can get a metal face plate, or you can get a um, brown face plate. So that's that right there. So we we are actually done with that process right there we are done now all we got to do is this part right here to where we need to put these two uh, black and red wires into the breaker um, so it's over here put them in right here on both sides and then the green wire right here onto the ground right there so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Um, I'm gonna cut my wires real quick. I know I just realized I forgot that they're too long. I went ahead and stripped them earlier, but um, I'm gonna cut them. I'm gonna shorten my cables real quick and I'm gonna hook them up into here before I put them in the circuit breaker. So we'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead, shortened them, and I stripped them, and I went ahead and uh, put them into the circuit breaker. I haven't tightened them down all the way yet But I went ahead and I loosened up one of these set screws in here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my ground in there So let's do that right now Make sure you don't touch these two right here because they're still hot. I haven't turned off the power to the house yet So there we go got it in that hole Tighten that down. Kind of hard to do it with one hand. There we go. Nice and snug, not too tight. The last thing you want to do is break this bar. All right, so uh, let me tighten those two real quick. Okay. So I do have the brake rod at the moment. It's off, it's on the off position. So, because this way's off, this way's on. So, all, as you guys can see, it's going to take up two prongs to build up to 240 volts. So, let's go ahead and do that. Should just slip right in. suckers are tight so I'm, I'm gonna use two hands real quick I'll be right back once I slid it um, the only trick is you put it on the lip and then push it on so you put it's almost like you put the right side on and then left but I could be wrong but I know it's on the opposite side you do the opposite so let me put that breaker on real quick and we'll be right back okay that only took like a set so and it was just the way that I said Put this side on first and then clip it on this side. 
So the breaker's still off. I haven't tested it yet. But uh, um, before that, I need to go ahead and punch out these tabs, these two tabs right here, so I can make room for that breaker to show through. So, like, and it's the same thing for these. Just, you know, barely pop in and it'll start coming out. So, show, show you guys right here. Since it takes two spots, take out the tabs. And just so you guys know, this is not the process for wiring a regular home outlet, like a one, a 120. This is not the same process. This is only for a 240, because 240 is super easy to wire in. So, so okay, so I removed that. Now let's see. Let's turn it on. Make sure it's on there snug. And it's good. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and shut that off because I, I do only need that for when I'm using my tools. You know, and I told my parents that uh, when I'm not using that outlet, I'll just shut off the breaker. Easy as that. So... I'm gonna go ahead and put this, put the face of the breaker box back on. Don't worry, it's safe, I won't get electrocuted. Grab the other screws. I'm just going to hand tighten these real quick. So here's the two breakers that I added right here. So so there we go. That's it. When I'm not using the outlet, I'll just turn it off to where it's at right now. Turn it on when I need it. So and then as you guys can tell, there's space for th uh, four more breakers, a double if I, if needed, and then two singles. So this big boy cuts the whole power to the entire house. So, but that's pretty much it. The whole process can take you about an hour to hour and a half, depending, you know, if you know where you're going to cut your drywall. I'm going to go ahead and look on Craigslist, see if there's anybody selling extra drywall or half-free drywall that I can just use and cut that out. But in reality, this what I spent so far, just 27 under 28 bucks. So, here we go. So, um... I'm gonna grab my tester and test it. Make sure I got 240 to 240 volts to that prong and this prong. So I'm gonna be right back so I can show you guys. So I'm gonna show you guys how to test this real quick um, to to see if you know your work worked. <laughs> so I got the circuit breaker on right now. It's on. 
I got my ground plug in the ground and then I got the setting at ACV uh, that's the test outlets well, not two test outlets but you could probably test other things but this is when you know that your wiring worked so each each prong right here one here and one here should give me about 120, 121, 122 volts each 120, 121 now to the next one 121, 122 so add those two together you get uh, 240 242, 244, 244 whatever but that's it and yes this is a Harbor Freight tool right here and it's and it works and it's you know it's like it's just really good I do recommend this if you you know you're testing your power you're testing if a wire works or not this is good right here um, this is like the in between of the cheapest one that they have and then the expensive one I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy their expensive one this is really good though I might go ahead and give this to a homie of mine or keep it just in case I don't know but hey, there we go the outlet works I get 240 turn it off since it's not in use and that's it in reality that is what you need um, for powering your your welder and your uh, um, can't see back there but I got two air compressors but I recently bought a plasma cutter so and the plasma cutter does need the the 240 so excuse my mess of tools I'm gonna be working on a new car and the reason why I got the plasma cutter is because I don't have to spend time on cutting stuff with hole saws like this for example this bridge and this axle are gonna go into the same car that I'm gonna be working on soon so and with the plasma cutter it cuts it just like butter Man, I uh, I'd never had one, and on the on the uh, what's it called on the Jimmy, I had a buddy of mine with the same welder that I just bought. He he cut it just in seconds. And I was like, wow, I could have saved myself a day if I had a plasma cutter. So, but that's it. That's it. It's it's super simple as you guys can see. It takes you less than an hour, hour and a half to do. Um. I'm not responsible for what you guys catch on fire, okay? I'm not responsible for that, so don't blame me for that. If you want, you can look up videos on how to do the 240 bolts, and they're super easy. I looked at a couple, and they don't explain a whole lot, so which was weird. It's like, for example, they didn't explain that the black wire and the red wire can go on either uh, thing on the on the plug and on the circuit breaker they don't explain that so but that's it hopefully you guys like the video if you guys did please uh, subscribe like the video and don't forget to comment down below um, more lowrider videos coming soon alright peace